Hi everyone, welcome to my PlatformCon 23 talk, Fungible Network Flexible Platform. So, what are we going to cover today? After a short intro, I want to touch on three main topics. The first one will provide some background on what kind of environment most enterprises are coming from. Next, we're going to touch on how enterprises are dealing with uh, networking today. And finally, we'll go into how we can move things forward and help bring networking practices into the platform engineering umbrella. You can see some key takeaways here, and I want you to keep certain things in mind as we go through the presentation. Networking is not all set and forget anymore. Things have shifted, and now the network can be as fluid as the rest of your stack. High bandwidth and reliability are table stakes now for networking. So what can be achieved by creating capabilities above and beyond layer three? We should explore that, that. Direct reachability and large routing domains got us so far, but now let's work to decouple things and take a more service-based approach to the networks that we're building and the services that are running on them. A little bit about me. My name's Paul, and I've spent my career trying to apply software engineering practices to large-scale infrastructure uh, delivery and operations. Obviously, that kind of came to be known as DevOps, and I uh, continued following that approach while I was focused on moving um, a very large global financial services company into the public cloud and onto more modern data center infrastructure. I realized that the only way to scale this infrastructure-based DevOps in an enterprise was with some kind of a platform approach. I was fortunate enough to get a chance to implement that at scale multiple times while I was in that role. For the last three years, I've been working at Google focused on how we can drive platform engineering practices and create solutions that enable our customers to be successful on their platform journeys. So in the before times, uh, networks were very much a physical construct, right? There was a lot of equipment to install and maintain and a lot of, a lot of structured cabling that went along with that. They were expensive. So all of that equipment had upfront capital expenditure and then ongoing operational expenditure in the form of support contracts and monthly circuit billing. There were a lot of space power and cooling concerns at scale in your data centers for your network. Everything had a long lead time for equipment and circuits. And staffing was a challenge because you needed to keep adding people to maintain more and more equipment. It's always the network was a popular refrain whenever there was an issue. Um, Large enterprise networks had cascading failure modes that were hard to diagnose, and they manifested themselves as application issues. That led to change windows that were very hard to come by to do things like patch your equipment. Any of the limited capabilities that were offered were centralized and mandated. Firewalls, proxies, DNS. IP address management was also centralized and had no self-service component for teams outside of networking. All of this led to some really interesting challenges. Um, if you had multiple locations for your data center and user communities, there was no guarantee that they'd all have the same level of connectivity. If your users or systems in one region needed to connect to data centers in another region, that might not be possible at all. IP addressing was everything, right? IP addresses were treated as a definitive source of truth for identity in most cases. That made them long-lived configuration items. You really couldn't change your IP address. You had multiple firewall rules, access control lists. Your application configurations themselves all relied on hard-coded IP addressing to function. Systems were typically mapped one-to-one -one by their IP in asset inventory databases and other management systems. Everything needed to be updated in concert to keep things working uh, smoothly if that IP address changed. Network teams were concerned with what they viewed as networking. Anything past layer three connectivity wasn't top of mind, right? Sometimes security products were an exception to this, but that wasn't the norm. 
all of this kind of created uh, tension between network teams, infrastructure teams, security teams, and especially the application and development teams. The waterfall style delivery approach that many networking teams took always put them on the back foot when dealing with other infrastructure teams and application teams that were moving faster. There was always many spreadsheets being filled out, requests being made in, in uh, bespoke systems, cables that had to be run. It all led to huge amounts of toil in the form of process, but also in the form of troubleshooting when some of that stuff didn't work. When we look at enterprises today, we can see some definite changes, right? Things have obviously moved on from being physical. Companies are virtualized in their own data centers and are moving to public cloud and co-location facilities that also supply virtualized services. Things aren't as expensive in the sense of circuit costs. A large amount of the scale we're dealing with is virtualized now, so hardware costs have also shifted. That puts companies in a real hybrid scenario where they're trying to leverage these new technologies and ways of working, but still have a large amount of traditional infrastructure running inside their data centers. In most cases, they have years of operational practices built up around that infrastructure. They have to contend with that, right? That leads to still having a large blast radius and not a large amount of capabilities. As more and more environments are added, though, things become less centralized because they're pushing things into public cloud for the systems that are running there. Outside teams are operating in these new environments. They're pushing back on the traditional designs and architectures that are being given to them by the networking teams. We've gotten to a point where location has become less of an issue. Enterprise networks are highly connected now with dedicated circuits and high bandwidth internet connectivity for third-party services and end-user remote access. Unfortunately, because of the split in environments, IP addressing still plays a major part in much of enterprise network operations. Systems that operate in the cloud or more modern data center environments can use things like metadata to handle policy enforcement, but there's still a large amount of systems that cannot handle this. Everything from firewalls to asset inventories and patch management systems, like I mentioned earlier, still rely on IP addressing to map system policies. This means that in many cases, even if you are changing something in the cloud where everything's ephemeral and is meant to be ripped and replaced, you still need to coordinate changes to ensure service continuity. The networking teams have realized they need to provide ways to handle these scenarios, but they're working on them in isolation, sometimes with their vendors, but not often with the other infrastructure or application teams. Now we have application teams operating solely in public cloud that need access to resources back in a traditional data center, and the network teams are struggling to accommodate these requests. There is still this concept that many applications, especially those in public cloud, could pose some risk to the enterprise, so they are treated as less secure than data center deployments and come under a bit more scrutiny. Application teams that have been running in public cloud and using infrastructure as code to manage their environments struggle when they have to turn around and deal with a traditional networking team operating in an on-premise environment to deliver something to them, like a firewall change or a DNS addition. So how does all that change? How do we move forward, right? So things are more and more abstracted away from traditional infrastructure components. That gives us a lot more options. We can create an enormous amount of complex networks in public cloud for relatively low cost. So the scale has changed, right, from the number of systems connected to a network as the measure of scale to the number of networks that you need to make a service. We can build out global networks with fully redundant high bandwidth connectivity with just a few lines of code, spin them up, tear them down at will. This kind of abstraction dramatically shrinks the blast radius when applied to services. We no longer worry about a single component causing an outage in our data center. We can reason about how a change will impact a single service that is running on our platform rather than having to try to reason about how a change could impact the entire network.
the mandates that were in place shift to outcomes. It's no longer, you must use this service to reach the internet uh, to stay in compliance. It's more like, these are the four things you need to do when reaching out to an uh, internet-based service to be in compliance. The network teams help document that and should be creating platform capabilities in the style of golden paths for the other teams to consume. Location's mainly irrelevant now. The ability to have a cloud presence close to your users in region with them is table stakes. No longer being tied to IP addressing as a source of identity, coupled with taking a service-based approach to exposing applications, means that a huge operational burden has been lifted. Using service directories along with other techniques allow your applications to automatically reconfigure themselves around outages and changes that take place around them. Networking teams should be shifting to a product-based mindset and function as an enabling team in the broader infrastructure platform. They're no longer dealing with the toil of physical equipment and are focused on higher level capabilities that can be built on top of the networking services delivered by cloud providers. Morale improves greatly across the board, and the speed of delivery increases because teams are self-servicing where appropriate and helping add new capabilities if necessary, rather than waiting for the network team to get to them. What do we need to do to get there, right? Sounds good, but how do we achieve all of this? Start by working to remove the dependency on IP addressing from all of the supporting systems. Take advantage of metadata and automated tooling to handle configuration and policy enforcement of things like firewall rules and routing decisions. Look to expose services for your applications to reach each other rather than relying on IP and DNS-based configurations. This level of abstraction really allows um, an extreme amount of flexibility in the underlying infrastructure and the changes that may take place. Creating many isolated, disconnected environments for your services to run is a feature of cloud, so make use of it. This allows you to standardize and reuse IP configurations for common cloud services. And if they need to reach out to each other, they use the cloud provider's abstractions to do that in a service-centric manner. I just want to reiterate again, network teams need to add capabilities to the larger infrastructure platform for application teams to consume. They're still the networking subject matter experts, and making sure they are involved in this will be what drives this forward. All right, um, that's it. Thank you for attending. Thank you for listening. I had a lot of fun preparing this session and look forward to continuing conversations with you. This is a really deep topic and 15 minutes is hard to do it justice in. Please reach out to me for more details. You can find me on Mastodon, or if you wanna read some of my other platform musings and find links to my other socials and GitHub, check out ravello.dev for my blog. My team is working to build out example platform capabilities, and we are publishing our work in that GitHub repo that's listed here. Please check it out if you're interested and want to see what we're up to and what capabilities we're thinking about uh, creating for our customers. Thank you very much.